Greetings, YouTube. Viewer Benny Anden, also known as Zuz T, reached out to me and asked me if I could edit one of his photographs. He says, I have a photo that I find very tricky to adjust. It's about HDR of sun and ice on the sea. For landscape photographers, it could be interesting. Can I send you that file and let you consider doing a tutorial on how to edit? Who, me? It would be an absolute honor. So stick around, grab some coffee, and let's do some editing in Darktable. Hey, yeah, so I'd like to order a pepperoni pizza with the extra thick crust, please. Cool. All right, so editing someone else's work is a really intriguing prospect for me because, well, it wasn't my original artistic vision and I did not control the artistic process. So I'm gonna interpret Benny's photograph as if it were my own, give up my own creative vision and do a full edit. All right, so we're in Darktable now and this is Benny's photograph and it's really beautiful. We have a hazy and ethereal snowstorm. We have a windmill. We have a flock of birds in the background and some warm sun coming through the clouds, making for a really beautiful landscape scene. So the main difficulty I see in editing this photograph are these dark smudges, the splotchiness that's scattered throughout the photograph here, which I believe to be likely caused by some moisture on the sensor at the time it was photographed, and it gets in the way of an otherwise perfectly composed landscape scene. All right, so my thinking is, is that we can creatively make use of the fact that the snow creates this very ethereal haze throughout the photograph and blur out the splotchiness, enhance the sense of natural haze within the photograph and preserve the detail in the birds as well, really allowing this beautiful landscape to shine through. All right, so let's go ahead and edit this photo. And the very first thing I like to do when editing a photo is I like to add a white border around the photo as a visual reference because it really helps when processing the image, especially with things like white balance. And there's two ways we can do that in Darktable. The first is, is we can click this light bulb icon down here and we'll need to zoom out a little bit. Or the better way I think is we can use the framing module and use a color of white and a border size of 5%. And I have a preset for this, so I'm going to go ahead and click it. Here we go. All right, let's do some lens correction and some denoising now. So the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and turn the lens correction module on and go inside the module. And we'll see by default it detected the camera and lens, which is a Canon EOS 90D and a Canon 18 to 135 millimeter lens. And by default, all possible lens corrections are on. And quick note here, sometimes at the lens correction module, I like to go ahead and turn the distortion correction off and use something like TCA and vignetting only because I think that the lens distortion sometimes adds a really nice artistic effect on the photograph and I like that. But for this photograph, I'm gonna go ahead and use all possible corrections. And now for the denoising, I'm gonna go and turn the denoise module on and go inside the module and we'll see by default detected that the camera was using an ISO of 3200 and it has a profile specifically for the ISO based on sensors. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply it at default settings. All right, so now that we've applied the basic corrections, the next thing I like to do is make sure that the exposure is exactly where we want it to before we do further image processing. So in this case here, we have a relatively high key photograph where the pixel values are occupying the upper register of the waveform. And that makes sense because we're photographing into the sun and the photograph has that very ethereal haze. So that would make sense. So we do want the exposure to reflect that. And in this case, the default exposure I think is correct, but we may want to adjust it, make it brighter or darker depending on the photograph. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is, is add some color to this photograph, which also helps us later validate the white balance. We can do that by going into the color balance RGB module and add some perceptual saturation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add quite a bit to the shadows, some to the midtones as well, and just a little bit to the highlights. And I'm gonna add some chroma and some global vibrance as well. So another quick note here, and I'm likely gonna make another video about this in the future, but it is more natural for our eyes to see saturation in the shadows and midtones than in highlights. And 
I think that sometimes people struggle to get accurate colors within Darktable because they're just applying the global saturation settings. But if we apply more saturation to the shadows and midtones, we end up with a more natural looking photograph. All right, so let's go white balance this photograph. So we can do that by going into the color calibration module and we'll see by default, it's set to daylight. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the eyedropper here and select somewhere in the snow and use that to neutralize the image. There we go. Now we can further customize this with the custom settings and adjust the hue and the chroma, but I think that this uh, eyedropper nailed the white balance. We have a much warmer looking photograph and those, uh, the warmth from the sun is really coming through. All right, so I find that with sunset and sunrise photographs, we can pull out a little bit more of that golden yellow color by adjusting the preserve hue setting in the sigmoid module. So in this case, I tend to think that somewhere around 38% works really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that here. And as we can see, that golden yellow color came out a little bit more. The difference is subtle, but it does make a difference. All right, so let's go ahead and add some sharpening and some local contrast. So for the sharpening, we can do that by going to the diffuse or sharpen module. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the lens de-blur medium preset to add some sharpening. And for the local contrast, I'm gonna go ahead and make another instance of diffuse or sharpen and use the local contrast preset. Now, because the regular local contrast module would go after the sigmoid module, I want to adjust the location of this diffuser sharp and local contrast to be in the same location. So we can do that by hitting control shift and dragging it to after sigmoid. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and deal with these dark smudges now. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to first start off by using the retouch module to get rid of these larger smudges here. And then we're going to go ahead and use the diffuser sharpen module uh, paired with a very complex mask to go ahead and blur out these uh, smaller smudges that are scattered throughout the photograph and do that while protecting the birds and the windmill as well. All right, so I'm going to use the retouch module to get rid of these two larger smudges right here and right here. So searching for the retouch module, I'm going to go ahead and use the healing tool and then I'm gonna select the circle icon here, but before I hit select, I'm gonna hit control on my keyboard. And when I hit this uh, circle icon here, it will allow me to create multiple instances of healing without having to click it again. So I'm gonna use the uh, zoom on my mouse to make this a bit bigger and select right here and hold down the left mouse button. And then when we do that, we can select the location that the healing brush pulls from. So I'm gonna go here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this smudge over here as well. There we go. All right, on to the most difficult part of the edit. Let's get rid of these smaller smudges scattered throughout the photograph using one of Darktable's most powerful modules, Diffuse or Sharpen. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna identify some optimal settings of Diffusion for Diffusion Sharpen. Then I'm gonna pair it with a complex mask that's made up of a parametric mask and a drawn mask spliced together that protects the windmill and the birds. All right, so I'm gonna start off by creating another instance of Diffuse or Sharpen. All right, so what Diffuse or Sharpen allows us to do with very great control is add diffusion or sharpening to the photograph and affect structures of various different sizes. Smaller structures are gonna be the first order speed and larger structures are gonna be the fourth order the speed and radius controls the size of the diffusion or sharpening. All right, so my sense is that we need to use a diffusion setting that affects larger structures rather than smaller structures and uses a relatively large radius so we can initially protect as much detail in the windmill and birds as possible. All right, so I'm gonna start off by increasing the radius. I'm gonna bring it up to somewhere around 400 or so. Now, to affect larger structures, I'm gonna add some fourth order speed and third order speed. So bring fourth order speed to around 42 or so, and third order speed to somewhere around 13. Now, to increase the uh, strength of the impact of the effect, I'm gonna increase the iterations. Now, 
Now, this completely blurred out the splotches, though the effect did seep into the rest of the photograph, which is the purpose of creating the mask. All right, so to protect the detail and the important parts of the photograph, we can add a complex mask using this drawn and parametric mask tool. So since these smudges occur mostly in the sky, I'm gonna first create a drawn mask that focuses on the sky. So I'm gonna use this path tool right here and create a selection that encompasses the sky. I'm gonna close it off by right clicking. Now to blur out this uh, selection a little bit more, I'm going to expand the softening a little bit so it's a bit smoother. Somewhere around right here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mask on by clicking the circle square icon here. And since for the most part, the detail is in the lower registers of the photograph, I think we can splice this drawn mask with a parametric mask that utilizes the value channel to further isolate out the regions we want this effect to happen on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the value channel and pull up these sliders to select the upper registers of the photograph, further refining our mask, getting us a bit closer to an ideal mask. All right, so my current sense is, is that this mask is a little bit hard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this uh, uh, select your tool here, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull back our drawn mask a little bit and make this uh, blur extend out a little bit more to soften the mask. Then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go ahead and increase the blurring radius and the feathering radius as well. Somewhere on nine maybe. Here we go. So with this photograph, I intentionally want our blur to go into the birds just very slightly because I think if we have some sharply defined birds against a very hazy and ethereal backdrop, it will look unnatural. So intentionally, I wanna feather it and blur it a little bit because I think it will create a more natural result. All right, so I'm gonna refine the drawn mask just a little bit more even. I'm gonna pull this back just a bit more. and extend out the softening just a bit more as well. All right, so we can go ahead and turn our mask off now. All right, so to finalize this photograph, I'm gonna make two more finishing touches. The first is, is I'm gonna go and add a bit more saturation to pull out the colors just a little bit more. Some Vibrance and Chroma too. All right. All right, so the last thing is, is because we blurred the sky with the Diffusion Sharpen module, I wanna recover some of the contrast that was lost. So we can do that by using the contrast equalizer. And like the previous example of masking, I also wanna apply a drawn mask here and isolate the area around the sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the path tool and draw a mask around the sun region here. Now I'm gonna further refine the mask a little bit. All right. And now we can go up to the contrast curve and add some contrast on the coarse side to create some macro contrast. So I'm gonna pull up the curve a little bit. Here we go. All right, so this is the final photograph. So using some rather creative hacks within Darktable, particularly the powerful Diffuser Sharpen module, we were able to restore this photograph and bring out its natural beauty. 
Hey, so I'm thinking if this video does really well, I'd like to do another video exactly like this in the future. If you're struggling with a photo edit in Darktable and would like to see it edited in a future video, let me know in the comment section below. And I read all your comments. Please let me know what you found valuable in this video and what was intriguing about my edit. And don't hesitate to tell me if you'd approach the edit differently. Hey, so I hope you found this video informative and intriguing. If you did, leave a like, it really helps on my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out my photographic work, see the website in the description below. Hope to see you in another video.